Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you've ever wanted to hook up a generator directly to your home so that you don't have to run any sort of extension cords or anything like that during a power outage, then in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that pretty affordably. And it really doesn't actually take too much skill or effort. So stay tuned. Now the whole premise of this video is for us to be able to have our home generator hook it directly up to our panel box. And in order to do that, you need an outlet box just like this. This is a 30 amp, uh, depending on your generator, they have 30 amp and also 50 amp. I'm actually just opting for the 30 amp right here. And so this electrical box will be hooked up to the outside of the house. We wanna avoid any type of carbon monoxide buildup. So it'll be able to hook up there. Uh, we have an interlock kit. Now this is very important guys. If you wanna keep this whole project up to code, you need an interlock kit and I'll show you exactly what this is, but basically this allows power so it does not go back into the lines that cause any kind of harm to the linemen if you're running your house. And so I'll get into a little bit more detail on that. Uh, we will need a 30 amp breaker, and, and this is gonna depend on the breaker box that you have. I have a GE panel, so we're gonna be using that. Uh, I'm also gonna show you, uh, I don't have a whole lot of room, so I have a few of the slim 15 amp breakers right there that we're gonna throw in there. We have these clamp connectors here that we'll be utilizing so that we uh, don't run the wires up against the panel. Uh, wire strippers, and then we have the 10.3 Romex wire right here that we'll be using. Uh, I think that's about all we'll need for this project. And overall, as far as cost goes, guys, I mean, uh, this box right here, I believe this was about $40, uh, $20 for this, $20 for the breaker, plus or minus and then about another $20 for this. So all in, I think that you could really do this project for about $100 to $150, plus or minus a few dollars, but it's actually relatively inexpensive. Let's go ahead and talk about the electrical panel first. Now, this is a GE panel. Some of the instructions that I give you, it's gonna vary depending on what kind of panel you have, but it should all be pretty similar. Now, my panel overall, it's actually pretty dang full. I actually only have one slot right down here. And so what's gonna have to happen is we're gonna have to move all of these breakers down a little bit because I have this big two pole 30 amp breaker that's gonna have to go right up here up top, right next to the main breaker. And so in order to do that, yeah, we're gonna move some of these down, but I also bought, and this will depend on if your panel allows it, but we're gonna have some of these little slim 15 amps uh, breakers right here. And we're gonna substitute uh, two of these and kind of just put them all into one little slot right there. And so that we can actually create a second slot uh, and that'll give us extra room overall to be able to put that 30 amp breaker up here up top. Before we go any further with the breaker box, let me tell you about the outlet box that we're gonna attach. This is, now this is gonna go to the outside of the house. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to attach this to, to the outside wall and run wires through the wall and then go through to the breaker. So let me show you how that's gonna happen. All right, so this is outside of the house is directly on the other side of the breaker panel. We can see that we have the meter right there and it's actually right behind that. And so uh, in this case, I have the panel box right here this outlet box that I'm gonna attach. Now, in most cases, what I would do is I would actually take this and I would attach it like somewhere down here. But in this case, uh, if you can take a look right here, I have these like uh, Cat5 cables, I believe, that are kind of just sticking out of the house. They've been here ever since I moved in to this house. And it just has like a gaping hole inside there. And so what I was thinking about doing since I don't use these and I already have an existing hole in the wall, and even though this is a little bit higher than I would like, I'm actually gonna go ahead, shove those cables back into the wall, and I'm gonna put this box right there. So it'll be a little bit higher than I'd like, but at least I can make good use of that hole. Now, what I did is uh, earlier, I went ahead and I got a drill bit, and I drilled straight through uh, the drywall. And so I wanted to actually just kind of see where that was at relative to the box. And so let me show you where that comes out. I drilled that hole straight through the drywall. And if you can look right here, I have this little tiny hole and relative to the box, it's actually really close. Uh, we have a stud that's gonna be like right here on this side. And then of course the box right here. And what I was thinking about doing, uh, I don't know if this is the best way, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up this drywall right here and I'll have to patch that later. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach that box to there, run a wire through the studs right there, and then hopefully on the inside of the panel plate right there, we have some punch outs where we can actually just feed the wire directly into the panel that way. And I think that's how I'm gonna do this in order to keep the box outside and run the wires the best way possible. So depending on your situation, you might not actually have to open up any drywall, and if you don't have to, I mean, that's great. Uh, I do want to actually conceal all the wires and make this as clean as possible going into the panel. And so I'm going to go ahead and just use the multi-tool. We're going to uh, carefully cut out a little bit of the drywall right there, uh, make a hole, make sure that there aren't any kind of wires. So I'm not going to go really deep here. 
the idea, what I think is going to have to happen is I'm just going to actually have to take a spade bit and actually uh, drill some holes through uh, two of the studs right there. Just make some holes so that we can put the wiring through there and that should actually go directly up into the panel. So let's see what's behind this wall. All right, there you have it. I got the drywall cut out. Now, I know some of you guys are probably thinking, oh, that was really stupid. There was probably a better way of doing this, but uh, this is the one way that I came up with and that's okay. I'm okay with patching the drywall. I can do a pretty good job of that. But you can see the stud right here on this side. And then of course you can see the stud right there that butts up right to the panel. And what I'm hoping is that there's a punch right here on the side of the panel where we can actually just kind of punch out and uh, drill a hole straight through uh, that stud right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this little spade bit right here. I'm gonna blow a hole right through here so we can run that wire from the outside to the inside. We'll run it across here and then I'll get another hole uh, over here so I can run it into the electrical box. Now that we have the hole in the stud, the next thing we're gonna do is actually go outside and attach this electrical box right here. Uh, they have a lot of different varieties out there and I particularly kind of like this one just because uh, number one is very heavy duty. If you uh, hold this up, I mean, it has some good weight to it. So, I mean, that's always a good sign. The, the steel is nice and thick. Uh, the other thing I kind of like, I like the, this electrical indicator. So when the power is going to this, this little light will go on. So it just kind of shows you if these uh, connections are hot. So you want to just make sure you avoid touching those. Now, to, uh, the other thing that I really like about these is some of these have just punches right here, the metal. And uh, they can be very difficult to actually, unless they're pre-punched, they can be really hard to actually get out. Uh, this one actually has these little rubber grommets uh, for each one. So it has all, on both sides, on the bottom and the back. So that just makes it extra easy. Uh, we're actually gonna be using the back. This is gonna go directly against the wall. And so the wire will, will be coming out there. Uh, to get this hooked up, it's very, very easy. All right, so we have the wire right here. And we have it stripped back just a little bit. Uh, so we have the two hot wires right here. We have uh, this one, uh, the white one, which is just a neutral. And then we have the ground right here. And so they have everything pretty much laid out for you. Uh, you're gonna come in here. Uh, I'm gonna run the wire through the back there. We're gonna run this ground. And you can see here that it actually has, they already have an extra spot right there for your ground. And then if you come over here, they have the W, X, and Y right there. And so the X and Y, those are for your hot. So that's gonna be the black and red. Doesn't really matter which way it goes in. Uh, and then the white right here, uh, this neutral is gonna to go to the W right there. And so you just wanna take off just a little bit of the sheathing right here, this insulation, maybe just like half an inch, no more than that. Cause you don't want any wire extra uh, exposed wire hanging out here, but you're just gonna undo these screws here on the sides. So these screws right here, you just undo it a little bit, stick the wire in there, and then you just cinch it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-do that. I'm gonna run the wire through here, and then I'll go on the other side, run the wire through the wall, and I can show you from there. Got the black and the X right here. Just tighten this up. Actually, we'll just go ahead and, and since we're close by, we'll put the white. Okay, so we have everything in there. We have the red, the two hots that are in the X and the Y. We have the uh, neutral that's in the, the W right there. And then of course we have the uh, ground that's hooked up over here. Now everything's ready to go. I went ahead, just kind of pulled on these, made sure that they didn't come out. And then all we have to do is just close this up. So it's all ready to go. Now on the outside of the house, I'm just gonna go ahead and fish the Romex wire straight through that hole that I had. And then, so we're just gonna push it straight through here and then uh, fish it out on the other side. Before I go ahead and mount this up to the wall and put the wood screws, it has uh, three little spots right there. So you can put some wood screws in there. Uh, I wanna address this kind of gaping hole that's right here in my siding that was here from before. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with some of this uh, great stuff, so this gap filler. Just go ahead and spray some foam in there so I can maybe close this off a little bit, make sure I prevent any kind of water getting in there. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount up the screws uh, right there and get this all set up. So I think that will about do it. It's gonna expand a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this box on there and get it flush up against the wall here.
overall, I would say this actually looks pretty dang good. It's nice and flush against the wall. So all I have to do now is actually just put this cover on and um, it should be ready to go. And everything else is from the inside. Hopefully so far you've been able to follow along and it's, this has been an easy process for you. Now here comes the dangerous part. We are actually going to dive into the electric panel. So we want to make sure that before we do anything that we're going to turn off the main breaker. We're going to do a couple of tests to make sure that there is no electricity flowing into any of these breakers right here uh, because I want you guys to be safe. Okay, now with the power turned off, we turn off the main breaker right there. We can go ahead and take off the front panel right here. And if you just apply a little bit of inward pressure, on the plate, you'll be able to actually handle this by yourself. So just kind of push in a little bit. That last one and the plate will come right off. So just another word of caution, guys. Anything up here up top is still live. That's still hot. Everything down below, this should be all off. Let's just go ahead and confirm that. And I want to show you guys, I just have this little tool here that's going to show if anything's live. So if I hold it up here, all right, you can see that there's actually, there is still power coming up here up top. So you want to avoid everything up top there. And then anything down below, go by any of these wires. We have no power running through here. Quick update. So this little punch in here, I went ahead and I knocked that out. Okay, that's where the wire is going to come through. I just did a one inch little spade bit. Uh, just did a hole through there, ran the wire all the way through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and strip back this wire so all four wires are exposed. If you come here and look at the panel really quick, uh, this is how it's going to work out. So basically we're going to take all of these um, all these breakers right here, we're gonna move them all the way down. I already moved this one down into that empty slot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace two of these 15 amps right here. You can see how they're just kind of standard size. So what I'm gonna do is actually replace those with these thin ones. So I'm gonna put a thin one in there and that's gonna allow us, so when once I get the 30 amp, the 30 amp is gonna go all the way up to the top. And so that should be able to fit right there. Now, just a few things when we strip the wires down, Okay, the, the red and black. Of course, those are gonna go to the breakers themselves. And you can see the two bus lines right here. So we have all the white wires on this side. So we're just gonna tie in one of the, the white wires there. And then the ground, you can see that's over on this bus. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a ground in one of there as well. So let me go ahead and do that now. So I just wanna kinda of show you guys what I'm doing here. I'm just undoing each one of these breakers and I'm just moving it down to the one right below it. Now, by doing that, just remember that once you start moving these, it's gonna be different on your panel as far as the labeling goes. So you definitely go back, make sure that you get everything relabeled so that you can properly turn everything off later. Okay, so for the very first ground, we went ahead, took this wire and we just undid one of these nuts right there, put it into right into there. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the white wire and we're gonna connect it to this bus. And we undid one, this one right here, so I'm gonna run it up and just put that straight in. And now for the 30 amp, I have that right here. I have the two wires already stripped. So you wanna strip just enough so it will go inside here, but you don't want any extra wires. So just maybe like a quarter of inch, a little bit more, maybe half an inch tops. And we're gonna go ahead and put those in there. And then we'll go ahead and slide that 30 amp right into there. And you'll know that it's in there when it sits flat, just like that. So everything looks good. All the wires wrapped around really nice. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is install the interlock. Now, as you can see right here, I actually made two markings, but uh, I went ahead and made a correction. So this little X's right here, the three X's, that's gonna be for the interlock right here. Basically, once I screw the holes into there, this is going to sit right like that. And I'll be able to put that onto the panel. It has a couple of screws to fasten that on. So I'm gonna screw these holes right now and then attach this interlock. Now I have the interlock kit, it's all installed right here. And so this moves back and forth. And if you go up here to the panel really quick, everything is connected. So we got the wire coming through here. We got the ground right there. We have the neutral that comes around on that bar right here. 30 amp, we have those wires that come up here and everything looks good to go. So all I have to do is put on the panel and let's see how this works. Now I have the panel all back together. Uh, I wanna show you guys the interlock, how this works. So basically the main power is off and that allows the breaker for the generator to be on. Now, whenever I turn the main power back on, this little piece right here, it'll slide back over and that will effectively move this bar over and lock that one. So it's just kind of interchangeable there. And again, it's just a safety feature for any kind of lineman that might be working. And so you can power your house 
uh, but you can do it safely. We are just about there. The only thing left I have to do is actually show you guys that this actually works. So here I have my Furman gen generator uh, on gas. I mean, this can get up to 7,500 watts. I think the, the peak is like 9,400. Uh, this is brand new, and I'm really excited to be able to use this to actually power the entire house uh, if I want to. And so uh, right here we have our 30 amp uh, connection right here. And uh, what I'm gonna do uh, for the future is I'm actually going to have, I'm gonna set up something so this generator can sit here on the side of the house. And then of course have a cable going from the outlet box all the way to here. And I can just keep this running outside all the time whenever I actually need it. Okay, so before we get the generator going, let's go ahead and plug this in. This only goes in one way. And once you get it in there, get in all the way and you turn it, you'll hear a little click. Just put that down for right now. And let's go ahead and turn on the generator. I'm gonna go ahead, plug this 30 amp in. Again, this only goes in one way, so go in all the way. Just turn it a little bit. And at this point, let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, fingers crossed. Let's go ahead, we'll turn that to gas, and let's try this out. Okay, that seems to be working so far. All right, now as you can see, this, this actually isn't blinking. This is just the refresh rate of the camera, but this green light is on. And so let's go ahead and flip a few breakers and see what turns on. Another quick note, I actually had everything off on the panel right here before I had this switch on right here before I turned the generator on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slowly turn on a few things and just to see how everything works. Okay, so I don't wanna turn it all on and uh, surge, you know, have any kind of surge on the generator or anything like that. So let's just do a, a couple lights and see what happens. And let's go inside and see what came on. So coming inside, we can see that the overhead lights are on right now. The refrigerator is on. We have Alexa booting up here. So any kind of like sense of electronics, that looks all good. So everything seems to be running perfectly so far and that's awesome. I wanna go back before I forget, just show you guys, I do have all the labels right here as far as how to work the interlock kit. I also have the warnings, so right next to the interlock and then right here on the outside. So anybody that is gonna use this in the future is gonna know that there's an interlock on here and just to kind of heed that warning. All right, so there you have it. That is how you actually hook up your generator to your house. Uh, I am gonna have to come back here and I'm gonna have to fix this drywall. That's not a really big deal. I can do that really easily. However, everything in the panel worked out really great. It was very straightforward for the most part. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything, I mean, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. That's what I love about YouTube is we can actually learn from each other. Uh, if you are interested in any of the products that I use, I'll go ahead and leave, leave some links also in the description so you can go ahead and pick those up. But hey, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. Hopefully it's helpful for you. Uh, next time that your power goes out, if there's any kind of hurricane or any kind of disaster, uh, you can have this as a reference uh, to get everything hooked up and just really make it seamless so you don't have to run extension cords or anything like that. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.